Hi, my name is Lauren, and I'm the GM of Shadowrun Corporate Sins on Hyper RPG. You can check us out every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. on twitch.tv slash hyperrpg or later on on YouTube. This video series has been showing you how to play Shadowrun. If you're interested in running your own campaign or just understanding a little bit more about what our players are doing at the table. Today, we're gonna to be talking you through the awakened world and magic in the Shadowrun universe. The first thing to know is that the astral plane is all around us. It's basically an overlay on top of the physical world. And awakened characters, mages, adept, and other magical people in our universe can see that world. It allows them to see what living things are around us, as well as manipulate that energy in order to cast powerful spells and summon spirits to do their bidding. There are many different kinds of spells in the Shadowrun universe, and they break down into four major categories. Combat, which is things that you would do to hurt NPCs or other characters. Illusion spells, where you're manipulating what devices and people can see, hear, or feel. Manipulation spells, where you're affecting the thoughts and actions of other characters. And health spells, which are adding attribute bonuses or healing characters that have been hurt in combat. The type of spell both determines what it's going to do to another character, as well as what happens when a character is hit by that spell. Do they get to defend? Do they take damage? How does it affect them? When a character is casting a spell, they use their magic attribute and their spell casting skill. Combine those together to create their dice pool. They also then pick the force of a spell, which is how powerful the spell is and how much of an effect it will have, as well as how draining it is for the character to cast it. They also have to be careful. Some spells act immediately and have an effect that is short and instant. Other spells, in order to continue working, need to be sustained. Sustaining a spell is hard on a caster. It confers a negative two penalty for any actions that they're taking other than sustaining that spell. The second thing that most awakened characters can do is summoning. This means bringing forth powerful spirits from the astral world in order to do their bidding, to act on their behalf. If a character wants to summon a spirit, first they pick the type of spirit that they're summoning. It might be a beast spirit, a spirit of man, a water spirit, fire, air, or earth. They then determine how strong they want that spirit to be, which is the force of the spirit. Summoning a spirit is always an opposed test. The character rolls their summoning skill plus their magic attribute to create their dice pool, and then the spirit rolls double their force as the opposed test. Every net hit that the caster gets above what the spirit rolled becomes the number of services that the spirit has to perform for the caster before they disappear back into the astral world. In either case, casting spells and summoning spirits is hard on our caster. They can't keep doing it indefinitely. Every time they cast a spell or summon a spirit, they have to resist drain, which is determined by the force of the spirit or of the spell which is, again, how strong that spell or spirit is gonna be. Depending on the spell or the spirit determines how much drain they actually have to resist, as well as the type of magic user that our caster is. For example, Mordecai happens to be a shaman. That means when he's resisting drain, he rolls his charisma plus his willpower and takes away all of those net hits from the drain, and that determines how much stun damage he takes as exhaustion from casting his spells. Let's look at a closer example of how this might work in a combat scenario. Mordecai somehow found himself on his own with a couple of grunts. They all rolled their initiative. Mordecai gets to go first with 26. Then the first lieutenant gets to go second with 17. And the grunt, they're stuck last with 13. Mordecai, seeing himself surrounded, is going to cast a Power Bolt spell. The Power Bolt spell is a combat spell that unfortunately for our lieutenant, he does not get to dodge the attack. It hits him either way. All he gets to do is resist how much damage he takes from the spell. Mordecai is going to roll his 14 dice to determine how effective the spell is. After he's picked it as having a force of five, he gets four net hits, which he adds onto the damage value, which in this case is determined by the force of the spell. So it's a total of nine physical damage on the lieutenant. Because of the type of spell, the lieutenant only gets to resist with his willpower. And he only rolls six dice for that. He gets three hits, which he subtracts from the total of nine damage, meaning that he takes six physical damage. He's not quite down for the count, but he's definitely wounded. The last thing Mordecai ha then has to do is resist his drain. For this, he rolls 16 dice. It's his charisma plus his willpower. He gets 
eight net hits, which is enough for him to resist the total drain on this, from his spell that he cast. The lieutenant then gets to go next. He's just gonna shoot at him because he's not an awakened character, and that's resolved in a typical combat action with an opposed test from both parties. The grunt then goes, and it's another opposed test from his pistol skin. Mordecai, seeing that he is in a lot of trouble with these two grunts, is going to summon Sharky in order to act on his behalf. For this, he's summoning Sharky at a 4-6. He rolls his 14 dice, which is his summoning skill and his magic attribute. He gets five net hits. Sharky, as a 4-6, rolls six dice to resist being summoned from the astral plane. With only one net hit, Mordecai has four services that Sharky has to complete for him. Sharky then appears next to Mordecai and takes his place in the initiative order. Just like a character, Sharky as a spirit acts on his own turn. But as a spirit, he has a few extra advantages. Spirits don't take damage from normal weapons in the same way, which makes them powerful companions in a combat situation. They are incredibly effective against regular combatants, although you have to be careful because they can also be attacked from the astral plane and it can be a lot harder to defend them. With the spirit now on the field, combat's gonna continue in the same initiative order, but the odds are now in Mordecai's favor. Once everybody reaches zero, we roll a new initiative pass and Sharky will do the same thing. Even though it's a spirit, it still works in combat much the same way as any other character. In the sixth world, the astral plane and magic is all around us. Characters that are awakened can manipulate the energy of the astral plane in order to cast spells and to pull powerful spirits in order to work on their behalf. Characters that are awakened are incredibly powerful members of any Shadowrunning team. And it's important to know that the NPCs are aware of this too. More often than not, they're gonna target the mage first, and it's up to the rest of the party to make sure that their mage makes it out alive. Thank you for watching our How to Play Shadowrun video. If you would like to keep watching Shadowrun Corporate Sins, click over here for our playlist, or to subscribe to our Hyper RPG channel, click over here. Last, if you would like a chance to win some of this awesome swag on the table, leave a comment or question below and we'll pick a random winner. Thanks for watching.